It's a well known fact that Fire Emblem is home to a huge amount of characters, and even more stories about those characters. Both inside and outside of the main story, we all have our favourites among the others either for their personality, use in gameplay, or a combination of both. However, debating which characters are good or not has been done to death. Nearly everyone into the Fire Emblem games on GBA has an opinion on which characters have the best personalities, backstories, relationships with other characters, and so on. But let's face it, if they're stuck with a bad class, they're not likely to contribute much to your army. Good unit classes are easy to spot, they handle combat well, they have uses outside battle, and have unique or interesting designs. With so many classes to choose from, opinions may vary on them just as much as the characters who possess them. So today, me and Dorito Viet are counting down our individual lists of the top 5 Fire Emblem GBA classes. Disclaimer: The views expressed in this video are purely personal, based on a number of factors such as design, fun, and so on. In no way do we believe that everything we say is 100% fact. Unique classes such as Lords, Manicats, or unplayable ones such as Kings will not be included. This video only features classes from the Game Boy Advance Fire Emblem games. Before Fire Emblem came along, evasion had always been a frustrating mechanic in every game I'd played. If you've ever fought a double team spammer in Pokemon, you'll know exactly what I mean. But Intelligent Systems' epic SJRPG series turned it into something badass, introducing the Myrmidon, a sword user focused on speed and skill. Their strength isn't too great and they can't take hits too well either, but good luck landing an attack on them. Put a Myrmidon on the forest and laugh as the chances of an axe user hitting him or her drops into single digits. And once you promote your Myrmidon into a Swordmaster, oh boy, things are going to get even crazier. They can reach the highest speed cap of any unit at 30, plus gain a critical bonus of 15% in FE7 and FE8, and a mind-blowing 30% in FE6. Just give them a killing edge and they will reach 50% easily. Such a high critical rate will make up for a lacklustre attack rate in no problem. Sure, being sword locked can be a problem, particularly with so few 1-2 sword weapons around, but Reaver weapons are available in all three GBA titles. This will give them the edge they need against Lance users and balances them out nicely. And you gotta love how they pull off all these flashy attacking animations with their criticals and whatnot, and yet their dodging animation is just moving their head a little. How disrespectful is that? Magic users are typically frail when faced with physical attacks, so you're likely to have them behind the front lines. All of them have utilities that can be quite effective behind the front lines, such as healing or using status staves, or even using powerful, long-range magic attacks such as bolting. But what if I told you that there is a magic unit with a function that can be used to help out the front lines safely, while gaining experience, with little to no consequences? That magic unit is none other than the Summoner. It's an exclusive promotion for the Shaman class in Fire Emblem 8. While only having access to dark magic and staves, summoners gain the ability to summon axe-wielding phantoms. Summoning phantoms also grants a little bit of experience for the summoner. Phantoms can blindly rush into a crowd of dangerous enemies and attack without worry. Even though they can only be hit once before disappearing, Phantoms can be summoned as long as there is a free space near the summoner and one is not already on the battlefield. They grow more powerful as the summoner levels up and can even spawn with different weapons. Summoners make for a fantastic supporting unit and their individuality among other magic users make them my fifth favorite class. When you've mastered how to use flying units, when to attack with them, where not to put them and so forth, you may find yourself craving an offensive powerhouse flyer that can rip enemies to shreds before anyone else can even reach them. And few classes fit this role better than FE8's Wyvern Knight. You can promote either Wyvern Riders or Pegasus Knights into this class. Instead of gaining a new weapon to use, they receive the unique skill Pierce. If it activates before an attack, it will negate the enemy's defense completely. <laughs> Suddenly, that general with 30 defense will be quaking in his boots. It's much more powerful than the lunar skill found in other FE titles, which only half the defense of its victims, and what's more, there's no way to prevent it. 
Even the mightiest of foes will be left really enough to appear below. If you're lucky, you could even wipe out the final boss in a single attack. There are few units as immediately destructive and as fun to use as this. Mounted units are known well for their superior movement and can quickly become great fighters at the front lines of a battle. But if you're searching for a mounted unit that can deal more damage and tank physical hits well, look no further than the Great Knight. It's another unit exclusive to Fire Emblem 8, and is a possible promotion for the Knight and Cavalier classes. While not getting the high movement of other mounted units, Great Knights have higher strength and defense caps, as well as the constitution to wield axes effectively. Now that doesn't mean they can't be quick though, promoting them from Cavaliers will score them the speed and skill to be much more efficient in combat. They have a great design, with their tough looking armor and fearsome horses, though they do look pretty stupid while wielding swords. I quickly grew attached to them while playing Fire Emblem 8, and now they are my fourth favorite class. The sword critical animation for the Nomadic Trooper alone is enough to put them on this list, but I guess I should explain it further. Bow users have a tough time of it. Bows are more accurate ranged weapons than hand axes or javelins, but no one range hurts them a lot during the enemy phase. Oh well, it could be worse. They could be artillery under Max's command in advance wards. But what nomads have over archers is an all important horse. I'm willing to forgive a lot when you can move further, even when you're stuck with bows. Once they promote into nomadic troopers and gain the use of swords, their problems fade quickly. Now they can defend themselves at close range and reach units from 10 spaces away with most bows, or even 11 with a long bow. Do I dare use the boots on them and boost it up to 13? Oh, such temptation. Well, male nomadic troopers do have the best aid of all units, so they could act as a taxi service for even your heaviest units. On the stat side of things, they have stats similar to that of a sword master, favouring speed and skill, but their strength is better, and if you're playing FE6 and your nomadic trooper reaches S rank for bows, they can use the legendary bow, Malagur, which boosts speed by 5 points when equipped. You could potentially have one at 35 speed, and if they have 30 luck as well, that's 100 evasion points. Sheesh, that is just crazy. But even though FE8's rangers are basically the same unit, I don't enjoy using them nearly as much. Why? The animations. When I first started playing Fire Emblem, I really wasn't a fan of flying units. They didn't seem to be much good in combat, took immense damage from archers, and I never paid any mind to their ability to move over most terrain. Over time, I learned how to use flyers properly, and began to really appreciate them. Now, when it comes to flyers, there's only one class that sticks out above the rest. That unit is none other than the Wyvern Lord. A promoted version of the Wyvern Rider, the Wyvern Lord has great defense and strength, along with fairly high speed and skill. They don't take archer attacks as badly, but magic attacks may give them reason to worry due to their very low resistance. They're fast, deadly, look badass, and share the great rescuing abilities with other flyers, and are my third favorite class. Pegasus Knights are typically the first flying units you'll get. They have excellent movement and are great at ferrying other units, but start off with low strength and defense. This makes them a little nerve-wracking to use at first. But as you slowly build them up and watch their stats grow, you'll become more confident in their abilities and proud of their growth, and once they're ready, you can use the Elysian Whip to promote them into a Falcon Knight. Now we're talking. They gain the ability to use swords as well as lances, something that will be a great boon to their overall usefulness. They operate much like a sword master with wings. Having more weapon options will make their life much easier as you fly over terrain others can't pass and use the appropriate weapon to evade everything thrown at them. They go from one of the hardest classes to train to one of the easiest. Swords are also beneficial to Falcon Knights because they do unfortunately have a con problem. They will lose speed from every lance except the slim lance, but swords are typically lighter, enabling them to attack with zero speed loss. Now to be honest, in Fire Emblem 8 I do prefer Wyvern Knights in general, but, and this is a big but, FE8 is a much easier game than FE6 and 7, and as a result I don't appreciate them as much as I would if they appeared in those games. So in the end, my award for favourite flying class in GBA Fire Emblem goes to Falcon Knights for being the most fun units to build up, 
greater evadability and awesome evasion skills. Units that can move across the battlefield with ease are a necessity for every army. If you can't maneuver around your enemies efficiently, you may find that your army simply can't get anything done. Fortunately, there are units available with excellent movement, and none better than the mighty Paladin. As the time-tested promotion of the Cavalier class, Paladins possess superior movement and well-balanced stats. They can use many weapon types as well, but unfortunately lose their ability to use axes and Fire Emblem 8. Paladins are quite common, with each game on the GBA starting at the player out with one, and potentially several more through promotions or recruitment. They have an excellent design too, with beautiful shields and swift armored horses to support them. In almost any situation, a paladin is a good choice, so it makes sense to choose them as my second favorite unit class. What's your favorite magic class in Fire Emblem? I like them all in their ways, but monks have pitiful defense and luck, a terrible combination. Shiremen are cool, but they tend to be slow, which becomes further heightened by their tomes. 20 weights for a book. Are you kidding me? My favourite magic class might seem to be the most bland at first, but once you get them going, they turn into my favourite GBA class of all. I'm referring, of course, to mages and sages. As mages, their animations hint at a lack of experience, that they're grateful for every moment that they continue to survive on the battlefield. But once they turn to sages, all that vanishes in a blink of an eye. Now they look incredibly cool and badass, completely unperturbed by the situation, slowly stepping backwards to fire their spells, quick badass turns and just a general air of confidence, and that's not even mentioning their awesome capes. On the stat side of things, sages are the middle ground between bishops and druids. None of their flaws are quite as pronounced. This makes it easier to get a sage with just the right balance of everything to kick butt. There is simply nothing cooler than a sage who can dish out huge damage, has enough speed and luck to evade well, and even have enough HP and defense to take a hit when your luck takes a turn for the worse. Add in stars for utility, and you have my favorite class of all in the GBA games. Training classes that can only use swords can be a massive pain due to their inability to counter ranged attacks. They'll likely be targeted by magic users, archers, or any other unit with a ranged weapon. Sure, there are ranged swords like the Wind Sword, Lightbrand, and Rune Sword, but you get them so late that you can only use them in a few chapters before the game ends. Mercenaries and Myrmidons are common victims of this so-called sword curse that seriously hampers their abilities on the battlefield. Well, what if you promote them? In the case of the Myrmidon, they'll always be stuck with swords, even after they promote. But what about those mercenaries? Well, they gain access to the incredibly badass hero class. When they promote, they'll immediately be able to use hand axes, which will allow them to counterattack enemies at range, but that's not all. Their stats are excellent across the board, making them an excellent choice for any battle. On top of that, they're easily the coolest class design-wise. The way that they attack is just so satisfying to watch. They can take on any situation, fight any foe, and look badass while doing it. There's just no choice for me, really. I can't help but choose the hero as my absolute favorite class in the Game Boy Advance Fire Emblem games. Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank you.